Uh, well, there was a lot of different perspectives, um, a lot of common themes that we, uh, you know, all the tables kind of uh, brought about. Um, but I think one specific one uh, was the uh, sub issue of um, not not just enough recovery homes, but um, not enough for uh, single mothers that have children. Uh, because that's very true. You in Littleton, we've got uh, two men's houses and we've got one women's house, and they're all. Uh, none of them really have that sort of capacity. Luckily, Keith, the owner, uh, Sean knows him well, uh, was able to come up because that that actually uh, it, it affects one of my employees um, who's pregnant right now. And uh, she was looking for other housing. Um, Keith really felt that uh, um, her boyfriend she was living with still needed the structure. Um, so he actually provided a, uh, a kind of a small apartment for them. So um, he's a really compassionate owner, though, um, and whether or not, you, you know, that that kind of infrastructure is out there to do that is, I think, one of the barriers that yeah. was new. So that was one of the big takeaways yeah. Yeah. for you. And we'll talk a lot more. But how about you, Daisy? What did you sort of get from your own table or from that wider discussion, which was just so interesting to hear from all the tables? Go ahead. So um, I've actually been most struck today by something Kim said earlier in the day, and then it came up again at our table, which is that there isn't as much recovery housing in the state as some of us have assumed. Uh, I guess I've just been living in a privileged world in Laconia where we have a lot of recovery ho housing available, um, and it's it's not that way in other parts of the state. And so we've got to do a lot to spread out past that 93 corridor. Yeah, again, I think a lot of us were struck by that vision of empty spaces in the state. Um, Go ahead, um, Donna, how about you? What struck you about all those conversations, maybe at your table or the wider conversation? Yeah, so, so I think certainly a, a major theme is the education needed in order to try to reduce some of that stigma, reduce some of the myths and misconceptions um, that you might see in a recovery house. And then also um, to understand how much support is out there and where to find that support, whether it's a parent support group um, or what have you, but just to kind of figure out those resources. Right. Did you learn anything that you didn't know before? Yeah, I was um, just surprised by some of the numbers. And uh, actually from our first segment today, the fact that only 30 states in the U.S. Yeah. have, you know, our version of New Hampshire core is, I think, crazy that there's, you know, 20 states missing that. So I think it's great that we have one in New Hampshire and that it's well known and well respected. Yeah, I've learned a lot today too. Um, that number that Daryl gave earlier, 60% of people who live in recovery homes succeed in recovery. Daisy was surprised by the fact that there were these big pockets. So we're all learning. How about you, um, Bill? What sort of came out for you from all these discussions today? Well, I've been involved in this for several years with the fire marshal's office, uh, Kim Bach, uh, trying to work through the hurdles of uh, codes and, and regulation. And I think during our conversation with the team, table, the most unique comment that was made that kind of struck me was the comment made, how would you like us in your backyard? So to all of us that are code officials, policy makers, uh, community leaders, <clears throat> if we are blind to the fact that the problem already exists in our communities, and we're not doing what we should be doing to recognize that and, and solve it, that I think really strikes me the most thing is it's, it's already here. We have the barriers of codes and regulations. How are we going to get those to, how do we mold those so that we make recovery housing more prevalent in New Hampshire? And, and not in just in our big communities, you know, Manchester, Nashua, you know, the other communities that are larger, we know the problems there. It's the smaller communities that you are not realizing the problem is there. And they're your neighbors, and we need to find a way to resolve it. 